that I'm the co-convener of the Victorian Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby. Uh, the Victorian Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby is a community-based advocacy group that works towards equality and social justice and advancing the human rights for Victorian lesbians, that's women who are sexually attracted to other women, gays, men who are sexually attracted to other men, and bisexuals, that's people who are sexually attracted to both men and women. We also work constructively and cooperatively and respectfully with organisations that represent trans and gender diverse people, that's people whose gender identity is at odds with their biological sex, and also intersex people. Um, those who uh, have physical sex characteristics that don't uh, fit medical norms for male and female bodies. So this year's Midsummer's Carnival, uh, Midsummer Carnival, which is a major cultural festival for LGBTI Victorians, we conducted a community survey for the first time ever asking LGBTI Victorians what issues uh, in local government are important to them. Uh, almost half of our survey respondents were aged under 30, about a third were between 30 and 49, and a sixth were over 50. One in 10 survey respondents identified as trans or gender diverse, and this is an increasing trend we're seeing with the number of people identifying outside of what we term the gender binary of male and female. Broadly, uh, people of diverse sexual orientation, sex or gender identity account for about 11% of the Victorian population. And whilst we are geographically dispersed, LGBTI people that live outside 10 kilometres from the inner city do, according to research, face higher levels of discrimination and social isolation. So, what did, the, uh, what did the survey show? Well, 83% of respondents said they wanted to see their local government focus on LGBTI-inclusive health and community services. This was ranked as the highest issue. Uh, it was followed by 67% of respondents who said they wanted to see greater advocacy by local government on LGBTI issues, including marriage equality and 61% of respondents ranked engagement and consultation with LGBTI residents and public statements and support of LGBTI residents as of high importance to them. So what this shows is that the idea that local government, uh, it's not their role to advocate for or publicly support LGBTI residents and that this is best left to other levels of government has been completely blown out of the water. LGBTI people clearly want local governments to provide inclusive health and community services and want to be consulted on the issues that affect them. So, if you're interested in inclusive health and community services, we have a breakout session today uh, called Rainbow 101 that's about providing you some guidance on how you can make your services LGBTI inclusive and achieve rainbow tick accreditation, which is being seen as the uh, high goal of LGBTI inclusive services. If you're interested in engagement and consultation, we have a consultation and engagement panel later today. And if you're interested in advocacy, we have a keynote address from Rodney Croom, who is the uh, leader of Australian marriage equality, and together with that, uh, Councillor Farrell has been leading local governments across Victoria and across Australia uh, to support marriage equality. Uh, and also, as uh, the survey of people working in local government showed, there is a real interest in how we can make services more inclusive of trans and gender diverse people. And this afternoon we have a panel of trans and gender diverse advocates speaking on the issues affecting them and what local government can do to make sure that they are more inclusive of the trans and gender diverse community. Other issues that were raised in our community survey were LGBTI community events and festivals. 61% uh, of people ranked this of high importance to them. And 56% said it was highly important to see images of LGBTI residents in council, pub in council publications. 
So again, if you're interested in community events and festivals, we have another breakout session on running events for Ida Hobbit, which is the International Day Against Homophobia, uh, Biphobia, Intersexism and Transphobia. Now, while LGBTI advisory committees and policies did not rank as highly in our survey, uh, these are important methods for local governments to achieve greater consultation and engagement with LGBTI residents, which is something that the LGBTI community clearly wants. Our first panel discussion uh, this morning is on getting from nowhere to somewhere. And just as one brief case study, uh, my local council, Glen Iris City Council, has just over the space of this year uh, passed a motion in support of marriage equality, included LGBTI people in its positive ageing strategy, and the strategy was also accompanied by an older adults guide to Glen Ira in which an elderly gay couple is featured. As a local resident said at the time, it validates our existence to see a picture of a gay couple in a publication. So that's just one example of a local council going from nowhere. This was a council that had no inclusion of LGBTI people in its policies or advocacy to somewhere. And there is still some way to go. So everyone here today will be at different levels. What we know is that under law, councils have an obligation to not discriminate against LGBTI residents in the provision of health and community services but they should aspire to provide services that are not only non-discriminatory, but are fully inclusive of LGBTI people that make up their local community. The notion that local government should just be concerned with rates and roads and rubbish is, frankly, rubbish. For local government to be representative of their local community, they must be truly inclusive of all aspects of that community, including LGBTI residents. So again, I'd like to say thank you to the Victorian Local Governance Association for organising this event. Thank you to all of you for coming. And I hope that you will all take something from today and know that the Victorian Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby and the entire LGBTI community here in Victoria stand ready to work with all of you in making your local government more inclusive of your LGBTI community. Thank you.